Today in BRS TV Refacts, we answer, what are these ICP tests even good for? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV Refacts. Today, we got the top five uses for ICP testing and two things I'd personally never use it for. Starting with number five, and the most obvious, you're running the Triton method. That method is a data-driven, precise approach to maintaining natural seawater and reducing dependence on a shotgun approach to water changes with actions based on data. In that case, the Triton ICP tests are at the core of that somewhat more modern approach to reefing. The number four reason is a periodic check that the additives are actually doing what they say. Almost all of them make some type of claim that they maintain all or most major, minor, and trace elements, but often it's also more ambiguous language like all important major, minor, and trace elements. With ICP, reefers don't have to take manufacturer's word for it. After starting a new additive system, they can ICP test in six months or so and ensure that the additive is actually living up to the claims or at least your desires and value mix versus cost. If not, move on to one that does achieve your desired goals for chemistry in your reef tank. For instance, with your specific water change schedule and coral bio load, how much better is, say, the most expensive two-part versus just calcium chloride, soda ash, and a quality salt mix? Get past the debate and get onto the real data based on your tank and choices. The number three use for ICP test kits is related to that. Just an annual checkup on your tank is your overall approach to reefing, additives, filtration, and maintenance producing the desired results. Visually it may be, but this is an opportunity to catch things before they visually go south. Because visually south often means mortalities. I guess I'd call this type of annual chemistry checkup also a peace of mind element that the water quality hasn't significantly deteriorated in the last year, and the anecdotal results I share with my friends and reefing community is based on both visual cues as well as actual data. The number two reason is unexplained issues. If your tank is going south and you can't figure out why, I'd absolutely send a test in. Best example I heard was from a reefer at Reefapalooza. He's having ongoing mortalities and was about to give up reefing. Instead, he sent in an ICP test kit, found out he had sky-high copper, looked at every element of his tank, and found the cause. Turned out there was a copper pipe in his ceiling that every so often was dripping into the sump. Once he knew what to look for, found the cause, and acted, he suddenly had a successful tank. This is a really good example of next-level problem solving and the evolution of modern reef keeping that ICP testing can provide. And the number one reason to use an ICP test kit is just questions which are hard to get answers to. Like what is the contamination in your salt water, which is that combination of your freshwater supply and selected salt mix? Maybe what kind of elements are in your calcium reactors affluent? Does a specific rock or substrate or filter media leach contaminants? What's in the various trace element products? Does a brown crud in my saltwater mixing bin contain anything undesirable? Does my additive solution, which mixes up brown, contain anything I'd like to avoid? In the past, these were kind of endless debates with no real support of data. Now reefers have a chance to evolve the conversation. So what are the two things I personally wouldn't use ICP for? Well, first, anything that's easy to test for at home or changes on a daily basis. I think calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, and phosphate being the most common. All of them have easy to perform test kits that you can perform at home and have similar accuracies as some ICP implementations for their specific elements. For instance, ICP isn't necessarily more accurate at major elements like magnesium, calcium, which are hundreds to over a thousand parts per million. ICP is more often used to measure in the few parts per million to billion. Related to that, for all those examples, I want to know what my calcium level is today and not a couple weeks from now. ICP does take a couple weeks to send in and get the results. Just because ICP lists a result doesn't make it the best solution for that specific element. Second, I wouldn't bother testing if I wasn't prepared for the further required exploration the results might require. Knowledge often just inspires a desire for more knowledge. For instance, I'd just be careful when testing specific salts, additives, medias, and interpreting the results. If a salt has sky-high lithium or silica, you might not know what to do with that information, and a bit of further investigation might be required. Like testing the salt mix as well as your tank. If your salt mix and your actual tank results are very high in lithium, it's hard to say how bad that is, but if you're having issues, I might consider a salt change. However, if the salt mix has moderately high silica, but your tank's in normal ranges, it might mean that the salt mix is actually a beneficial source of an important nutrient to many organisms in the tank. In any case, further investigation and application of knowledge is often required 
So I wouldn't bother testing if you're not inspired by the accumulation of knowledge and finding unique solutions to complex problems. Related to that, Randy has certainly gone down the rabbit hole of testing salt in the last few months, one answer after another, just leading to new questions. But recently we released a video which was really the accumulation of that and nailed down which really required to properly mix and store salt water. Almost everyone that I've talked to found the results uh, pretty shocking and way different than most of us thought. Hit that link and see the results. See you next week with another batch of BRS TV Refacts.